Hello, everybody. Welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ on this day, September 1, 2016. Wow, September already. Seems like just yesterday that it was August. Hey, uh, welcome to Beyond the Basics, working with plot style tables in AutoCAD 2017. Today's presenter, my colleague Ryan Bales, and I and Voker Coco, and with us we also have Naman Mysorwala, who will be moderating. I'll be moderating as well, as Ryan will be doing our presentation today. So, before we get started and talk a little bit more about our webinars and the webinar topic itself, I am going to go ahead and throw out a poll. Many of you are used to this, and some of you are not. We're going to find out who is and who isn't right now. So the question being, is this your first Autodesk Help webinar? So far at 100% no. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of repeats. We love it. We love seeing you guys back here. Always good to have you back. And for those who are new, welcome. Hopefully this will be a good experience for you, and you will be one of those who uh, returns for future webinars. All right, I'll go ahead and close this one. Let's just kind of plop it out there for everybody and let you see those results there. And so that's quite a uh, differential there as far as those who have been here and those who haven't. So one more. Uh, we'll have one more at the conclusion, but one more right now. And basically, um, which AutoCAD based application do you use? Um, this is always helpful. You know, uh, we tailor the, these sessions right here for AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT, and everything should work on AutoCAD LT unless specified. Um, but we are looking, and there are rumors that we're going to be doing uh, webinars for the vertical applications, such as MEP, Architecture, AutoCAD Electric, Civil 3D, etc. So that should be showing up. Well, in the rumor mill it is right now. It's already available in the rumor mill, but uh, we'll see what happens. I'm going to close this here, and let's take a look. We have about 33% of you using AutoCAD, 32% using LT. So um, uh, pretty good there. 22% using some of the verticals uh, on the architectural side, and then AutoCAD Civil 3D users. Well, good thing is what we're going to be showing today is applicable to all versions of AutoCAD. So let's talk a little bit more about our webinars. This is something I have to do, and it's a good thing because it'll allow you to see what's coming up. So uh, obviously this week we're working with the plot style tables in AutoCAD. Uh, September 8th, we're going to going to have another uh, third dimension uh, track, Introduction to Cloud Rendering. On the 15th, our tips and tricks is really how to set up a template for your office. And then our Back to Basics, September 22nd, is an introduction to tables. So some good stuff coming up. As always, you can watch any past webinars on our YouTube channel, Build Your AutoCAD IQ, there's a quite a lengthy playlist. We've been doing these since, I think, early 2015, or maybe it was late 2014, quite a while now. Data sets that we use in the webinars are also available. And um, we encourage you to check out our webinar landing page, as well as the AutoCAD uh, forums. If you are truly geeky or you want to be on the bleeding edge of everything or you want to just get involved with the product team about the application, um, giving your feedback about features, about what you do like, don't like, what you'd like to see added, um, hey, join the AutoCAD Customer Council. Uh, there's a couple of links here for the AutoCAD Beta and uh, AutoCAD LT Council and um, shoot them an email, tell them you'd like to get involved. It's, uh, you don't necessarily have to test the newest 
applications that are released, but uh, you can give your feedback in the feedback uh, thread of that uh, website. So good stuff right there. Uh, by the way, all these links will be available in your um, follow-up email. should also have them already in one of the uh, emails that came to you prior to this webinar. So we will download the data set after this session. Feel free to leave questions in the uh, chat window. Uh, Naman, myself, we will be answering those as best as we can. Afterwards, if there's time left, we'll do some verbal Q&A to uh, answer anything that wasn't answered or had been asked a lot in that chat. Session is recorded again, so uh, YouTube, as noted pre previously. All right, uh, don't forget about our AKN, or Autodesk Knowledge Network. We have lots of articles available there for troubleshooting, for getting up to speed. Um, uh, as well as downloads for uh, things like offline help, service packs, hotfixes, uh, templates, language packs, etc. Uh, so a lot of good information to find there. I'm not going to let Ryan speak a little bit about our agenda. Well, thanks, Volker. So today we're going to talk about plot styles. We're going to primarily land on CTBs um, and color-dependent plotting, mainly because that's the default, and most of you should be familiar with CTBs. So we'll talk a little bit about what they are, where they're located. I'm going to run through creating a plot style table from scratch, and I'll show you different ways we can go about doing that. We'll apply one to a layout and see what it looks like, and then we'll kind of finish out with trying to find issues and problems that can occur with using color-dependent plotting. So when we dive into CTBs, we'll talk a little bit about plot style tables again, where they're stored, what they're used for, uh, line types, line weights, etc the default in AutoCAD, and we'll finish out by creating a new style real quick here in a minute. All right. Thank you, Ryan. And I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you so that you can give your little presentation here. And we hope everybody will enjoy this. Feel free to leave questions in that chat window. Well, thanks again, Volker. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about what are plot style tables. So this is straight from the help document. A collection of plot styles assigned to a layout or model tab. There are two types of plot style tables, color dependent and named. So again, today we're going to spend a little bit more time on color dependent plot styles, which are called CTB files, as most of you should be familiar with what they are. So CTBs, or color dependent plot style tables, use an object's color to determine characteristics such as line weight. Every red object in a drawing is plotted the same way. While you can edit plot styles in the color dependent plot style table, you cannot add or delete plot styles. There are 256 plot styles in a color dependent plot style, one for each color. So with that, and knowing that color-dependent plotting is where we land, let's start in by showing you where CTBs are and where you might normally see them. So by default, you don't really see CTBs actively. Um, they're stored when you plot. So for starters, let's look here. And you can see in my plot window, in the upper right-hand corner, we have a table called, called Plot Style Table. And this is a drop-down that allows us to pick a specific CTB to plot with, or a plot style table. This button here allows us to edit or configure the plot style table. And then if you turn view plot styles on when you're plotting or plot with plot styles, those are affected when you plot. So you can effectively use the plot styles uh, this way. If you shut this off, you will not be printing with plot styles. So. For starters, remember every time you plot to make sure that this is turned on 
once it's on, it doesn't get shut off unless uh, you shut it off. So the main thing that we want to make sure is that you know where plot styles are. So by default, plot styles are located on your C drive, which if you go into Options and File Path, under Printer Support File Path, there is a Plot Style Table Search Path. Under there, you can see the location. Here you can see it's in my users, username, app data, roaming, and then you go all the way down to the version plot styles. So by default, all of our plot styles will be located here. So when you make a new one, unless you specify its location or you move the wizard that comes with AutoCAD, it will be located there. I've got it pulled up in Explorer here, so we'll pull that up. So here's that exact folder, and you can see all of my plot styles. You can see CTBs, the color dependent, and STBs, which are named plot styles. We won't cover STBs in this uh, webinar nearly as much. We may answer a few questions if we have time, but we're going to focus on color dependent plotting. So you can see here's my back to basics CTB, or beyond the basic CTB, sorry. So we'll use this one in our AutoCAD and, and uh, I'll also show you how to create a new one. So now that we know where these are, um, by default, we can also set then create a second location on a network drive. I won't show that here, but for you guys to set those up, it would be pretty simple. In options, under the same location, printer support file path, plot style table search path, you can simply add a path and map that to your network drive. So from here, let's jump right into creating one. So as you can see, I've got a layout space. I've got an XREF in here. You can see the colors are, are a little bit faded from the XREF, but that's normal. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a test print and just kind of see. This is my Beyond the Basic CTB. But for this, let's do a None because by default, there is no named plot style set up. And that's important to remember that some of you may not actually use this. By default, they're not set up. So we'll do a preview and you can see that everything prints true to what it is shown in the model. So now in my Beyond the Basics, which isn't really set up yet, you can also see that I've got some things turned to black, and for the most part, everything's pretty normal. So what we'll do from here is we'll show you a little bit about creating a plot style, and then we'll edit it. So to create a new one, there's two different methods. Under Plot Style Table, you can go to New. Um, I prefer this method because I don't have to leave AutoCAD. But if you choose to go to the location, there's also an Add a Plot Style Table Wizard. We'll do this one first, um, and then we'll jump into AutoCAD and create a second one. So when you launch the wizard, it'll be a little bit older. Um, some of you may not be familiar with this type of dialog box, but that's all right. So we'll create one from scratch. Uh, I could use an existing one, but we'll just start over and just do a brand new one. So in table type, I want to do a color dependent plot style, which is a CTB, and not a named file, name plot style for this one, which would be an STB. So we'll hit next. And here, let's do beyond basics two. Let's hit next. So from here, the plot style is say or is created. We need to make sure it's in the correct location. So we'll do that here in a moment. We could enter the plot style table editor, but I'm going to wait to do that in AutoCAD. So this option is quite important to remember as well. If you enable this box, the plot style table for new and pre AutoCAD 2017 English drawings, it will be the default. So if you are creating a default for your company or CAD standards, this is a good checkbox to remember as it will apply that. But you have to remember it may not apply to every session so you'll have to check with everyone's computer. So let's just leave that off and we'll hit finish. So now you can see that my Beyond the Basics 2 CTB is here. Um, with the T capitalized, it looks kind of funky, so let's rename that. And now it matches pretty well. So we're going to jump back into AutoCAD and we can see if we cancel out of this and hit plot to refresh this, 
my Beyond the Basics CTB. You're not showing here yet, so. So if it doesn't show in there, we need to make sure that it's in the right location. So there it is. So we may have to restart AutoCAD, but that's pretty normal. Oh, there it is. So it took a second to refresh, but here it is. So here's our Beyond the Basics 2 CTB. So now that we've got one created through there, we can show you the quick way to do it that I prefer, which is in here. Same dialog box, but because you're creating it through this session, it should be pretty immediate. And we'll start from scratch with this one. We're going to call it Beyond the Basics 3. We'll hit Next. We'll use it for the current drawing, which is important to remember when you do it inside of AutoCAD. This checkbox is set by default and pretty handy if that's what you're using it for. So we'll hit Finish. So Beyond the Basics 3 is immediately loaded as we created it through AutoCAD. So from here, let's jump into editing and we'll go through some of the settings. When you open the plot style table editor, you can see by default we're set on form view. The general tab will display the type of information. There's 255 styles, one for each color. This is a legacy version, can be used to import old DWGs. Um, by default, apply global scale is not on. Table view allows you a little bit um, condensed view of the, the styles. Then each color represents a particular style in the plot style table. So in form view is where we'll hang out. Over on the right, you'll see the properties. There's colors, uh, dither, grayscale, pin number, virtual pin number, screening, line type, and the rest of the line settings. For the most part, you probably will not use pin number or virtual pin number. I prefer to leave those as automatic. Uh, most of us don't use physical pin plotters. So these are a good idea just to leave as automatic unless you explicitly know what these should be. Dither, you can leave on. Um, like it says, if you hover over the explanation, plotter uses dithering to approximate colors with dot patterns. Um, Grayscale is really important if you're printing black and white. Uh, it's, it can really save you money on ink or, or toner, and it does help with coloring. So we'll use the object color for color one. Um, this is also standard. This means that when we plot with color one, which is red, it'll actually plot as red. So if we were to change this to black and to use grayscale, color one would actually print as black. That's important to remember when you're printing black and white, as any colors in the CTB not set to black or grayscale will print true. So you will print partial color, partial black and white, which would really just be a color printing. So from here, we'll, we'll look at screening. Screening is important if you're trying to fade colors and line weights out. Say you have an existing file or existing equipment or something that you would need to be faded in the background, a background that's not yours. Um, that's for screening is really important. Line type, this is really good to remember too. You can override line types set by object or by layer. So if you have an object line type and you use, set, use object line type, it will divert to that. An object line type or color will override a layer color or line type. So the CTB kind of overrides those, and so we need to be careful. I generally leave all of these as use objects so that we don't override what we already have set up. Line weights, line in type or in style, join style, and fill style. I would leave those as is unless you again explicitly know what these should be. These are really line weights are really important to fade out if you have existing stuff. But if you don't have that set up in your layer, you can also do that here globally. So for this example, we're going to leave color one to black and grayscale on. We're going to turn color four to about 80% screening. That'll lighten color four. We'll also turn it on grayscale. Uh, we can use object color, but I'll turn it to black just so it looks a little bit better. Um, one of the other colors I know we have in our drawing is color two, which is yellow. So I want to make this 50% screening so it's really light. And we're going to use grayscale and turn it to black. So this is kind of a brief overview of the properties or the editor. 
you can edit line weights here. You can use the description. So if we wanted to use color two as our, say, let's use it as notes, and we want to use color four as existing, and then we want to use color one as you know outline. So now our descriptions will be held here. So if anybody's curious and they open this up, they can see. So from here, we need to save and close. And then in our plot window, we also have the option to apply to the layout. Now, if you watched Zach and Mike's webinar, they went over plotting a lot more in depth than Volker and I are going to do. We'll talk a little bit about plotting to PDF for quality assurance or quality checking, but we're really focused on plot style tables. So for this, I'm not going to hit apply to layout because we're going to show you a little in a little bit about page setups. So we're going to hit preview, and you can see that all the colors that I changed that existed in my model are now printing as black or grayscale. Yellow, which was this north arrow, is printing quite lightly, and some of the cyan stuff is a little bit uh, darker, but it's hard to tell at 80%. So you can see, too, if I were to print right now, this green stuff would print green. So it's important to remember in a in a CTB or a color dependent plotting, you need to be very specific if you're going to print black and white. So knowing that, we're going to jump back in. We're going to go to color three, which is green. We're going to make this black. We're going to turn the screening a little bit down to 70%. And we're going to change the line weight to 0.09. This will lighten it up a little bit, turn grayscale on. So we'll hit preview. See, now you can see the color green is pretty light. The line thickness is a lot less, and it shows up pretty well. So that right there is the plot style table creation and editing. So from here, we need to jump into what happens when you set an object color. So I have another viewport here, and these objects are all set randomly to color by object. So if we go in here and we pick, say, this, this line on this pipe and we go to properties, we can say that I set it to blue. So now what happens when we print is that because we're overriding the layer color of new line, which if we go into um, our layer manager, we can see that new line is actually set to green. So if we print and we want to use the layer of new line, and we'll set DW to PDF, and then let's just make sure this is 11 by 17, and we'll hit preview. We can see that these actually print true to green. So this is why when you use the color dependent plot style, you want to make sure that the colors are not set to by object unless you have that object color set up. It, it usually is a big problem if you have, say, a, a color out there in the range of, uh, I don't know, in the 200s or 100s. These main colors can be pretty easily set up. In the plot style table, they're shown uh, first. But any of the other range of colors, it's pretty easy to look that 170 looks pretty similar to color number five, but it's not. So when you go to print that, it will print as true color 170. So what we need to do is we need to get these colors back onto by layer if we're going to print by layer. So to do that, I usually quickly go into model space, select my objects, do a quick select, We'll pick the objects, and we want to either do it by layer or by color. If you do it by color, I pick not equal to by layer and select, and all 575 objects I put on a bad layer or bad color can now be reset to by layer. So now you can see they're by layer. So in addition, I put some of these objects on a bad line type. So you can see that I put these on hidden and I overwrote their line weight. These can also be set to by layer here and controlled in the layer and then in the CCB file.
So we'll leave those for now. So jumping back into our viewport, um, we'll close properties. And let's do a quick print and just see how it looks. So we'll use our previous, which is our DWG to PDF, 11 by 17, beyond the basics three. I'm just going to hit apply and then we'll hit preview. So now we can see that everything that was printing as the wrong color is now printing back to how it's defined in the CTB. Except for that which color does not reside in our CTB is, is being edited. So this stuff will print as blue. Um, also the hidden lines that we had are showing up as continuous lines. So that's either a layer control or an object control. So from here, I think the best thing to do is to show you a page setup. So back in our main CTB demo page, we have our, our normal drawing that we first worked with, um, and we have our colors set up in our CTB. So the next thing to do is to set up your page setup. Zach and Mike again talked about this a little bit, but from the aspect of a CTB, it's important to go in here and modify your page setup to be correct. As you can see, it looks identical to the plot window except for two different things. You cannot plot or apply to layout, or sorry, three different things. You also can display plot styles. So this will allow you to set up a page setup with our given plot style. So we're going to pick Beyond the Basics 3, and we're going to click Display. And when we click OK and we click Set Current, we can see that CTP demo is not set to be on the basics. When we hit close, you can see that every object is now displaying as our plot style calls out. So our CTB has defined that yellow is light. So now I can actually see that as how it will print when I click print. This is helpful to see if there are objects just right off the bat that don't show up right. So if we do that again here, We can go to Page Setup Manager. We can set Beyond the Basics to our current. That'll also change by layer, which is the, the sheet that I change stuff back to by layer, and hit Close. So now we can see we have these blue objects that are printing incorrectly. Um, if you turn line weight off and on, you can see um, a little bit better. I think it works better in model space. What's going to print that way? Let's go back to paper space. But now we have a pretty good indication of what we're going to print just by having it preloaded in our page setup. So with page setups, we also have a, a different couple options in Plot and Publish under Options. So we can set our default printer. Uh, again, Zach and Mike talk about this too, so it'd be a really good idea to go and check out their webinar after this one if you have any more questions about plotting generally. And then, so again for this we're going to focus on the plot style table settings. We're going to leave everything as is and so in here you have a different dialog box where we're specifying the default plot style behavior for new drawings is use color dependent plot styles or CTBs instead of STBs. So we can also now set our default plot style table. So in here, we're going to set Beyond the Basics 3 as our new default plot style. Because it doesn't have specific styles, these do not change. You can add or edit plot style tables, but again, with a color dependent, you have the plot styles that are for each color. So we'll hit OK, we'll hit Apply, and OK. And then we're going to create a new drawing. We'll just use the default template that's set up here um, for AutoCAD. Let's see. I think I'll just create new. Let's see. Wow. That's what happens when you have that many different versions of AutoCAD and stuff. Know where your templates are. So it looks like we can jump into shared support templates. All right, so 2017, let's see. Hmm. 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah. me more. <laughs> this is exactly what our AutoCADs look like. You're in roaming? Um, I should be in program data, but I can go to roaming. Let's see. We'll do it from here. Are they in here? I don't know. Well, my Vulcan and I are trying to find new templates. We'll just use the default advanced steel template. So this is basically just a default 3D template based on the AutoCAD templates. So sorry for that. So in layout, what we'll do is we'll create a new layout just like we did before. What I want to do is I want to go back to my other drawing and I want to save my drawing. And what we're going to do is we're going to import our, our uh, our, layout. our layout space. So what we're going to do is go into here and we're going to go from template. Oops, Oops and not template, sorry. I think what we'll do is well, let's just do a brand new one. It's easier that way. So we'll, so we'll X ref our drawing and our drawing is located in my Beyond the Basics folder. Plot style tables two. So we'll X ref in our file. Plot style table two. So this is our drawing that we're going to use to set up our CTB and C. So we'll put it at zero zero zero. So we'll go top. We'll zoom in a little bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check our page setup. And because I use a different template, our pen style table or our plot style table is not set right. So we'll have to correct this. We're going to turn it back on and we'll use AutoCAD PWG to PDF. All right. So we have our options set to be on the basics for new um, templates. This is our default style. So from here on out, we need to make sure that you guys know a little bit more about the layer overrides and stuff. And then I think we'll jump into the last little bit of discussing CTBs versus STBs. And we can do some Q&A. So in our, well, let's jump back to our other drawing. So in this drawing, when we go into layer, you can see that we have all these different settings. We have our plot style set for color. That's because these are numbered. We have our viewport settings so we can viewport override. I think the important thing to remember here is to pick known colors in your CTB. If we were to change this to say 73 instead of green and then print anything that's supposed to be that color, I think we have it shown over here. So you can see it will print as 73. And this is because our layer is set correctly even if our object is set to by layer. So again, the other part of object is to set the object color correctly if you, if you have something that has to print specifically. And you can see because our CTB has green set and we selected our object color to green, we're going to print how our CTB has it displayed. So that's a big benefit to you if you're troubleshooting why objects aren't coloring correctly or printing correctly in colors and how to get them back to normal. Or if you need to overwrite a couple things to print a certain way. Say if you have existing stuff or new stuff and you want to highlight different options. Uh, we definitely recommend setting as much as you can in the layer and then printing that way so that it's global and you'll have less problems. And then the other thing to remember is 
when you go to print your file, to, or in order to check what you're printing, we also try to print a PDF. And the reason we do this is because it allows us to save our PDF, um, say, here in our in our uh, Beyond the Basics folder, and we'll print it. Now we can open our PDF and see that, oh yeah, we have a bad color. So instead of sending a color print to a printer that should be printing black and white, it prints with blue. The other, thing the other thing to remember is plot style tables do not change what the printer is actually going to set. If you print an all color drawing and your printer is set to grayscale, this still will print grayscale. And Volker mentioned to me before the webinar to remember, remind everybody that visual styles also will override everything globally. So the, the order is you have object or layer, then object, then CTB, then your visual style. So if we set our visual style to say realistic, you can see that it overrides everything to its true color. And when we go to print that, there's a good chance that it will override our CTB and we will get colors that we do not want to print. The best way to avoid that is to print it in the exact visual style you need. Generally set it to legacy hidden would be the one, or 2D wireframe, which is legacy hidden. And so leaving shade plot as displayed will help, as you won't be overriding what the visual style is set to, and thus your CTB won't be overridden. So if we have a little time for Q&A or the difference between named and colored, I think we'll jump into named and colored for a couple minutes here and let's talk a little bit about STBs for CTBs and then we'll end with some Q&A. Um, and then just another reminder on Zach and Mike's webinar last week. Um, try to watch that if you can. If you haven't already, I'm sure some of you have. And then it has some pretty good information on plot styles. They briefed over it because they knew we were going to cover it, and then they talk a little bit about PC3s, which will help configure your plotters so that you don't accidentally print color or accidentally print black and white. So STBs, which we didn't cover and we won't cover in depth here, are called named plot styles. Named plot styles are a different level of control. Uh, they're generally used as global settings or override settings, they have independent plot styles not based on color but by object. There's some advantages to both. Um, most everyone uses CTBs, so it's a really good advantage for that. Uh, they're mostly based on pretty default settings, so they're not really heavily modified. And you can pretty much usually see what's wrong when you print with a CTB. STBs have different advantages in control and line weights and pen weights. You don't have to remember colors or how they affect line weights. Uh, and you don't really have to use all 255 colors like a CTB has set up. Uh, they can be swapped in the drawing, but it requires a couple of special commands. So those are usually convert CTB or convert, I think it's convert P styles will convert from a CTB drawing to an STB drawing. And again, in the Options tab, we have the option to set plot style table settings as default for color dependent, which is a CTB, or a named, which is an STB. So plot P style policy will also help define that. So the important thing to remember is what is best for you and your company. My experience, it was CTBs. We didn't use a wide array of colors. CTBs allowed us quick check. So, and a lot of it's personal preference. Um, so if we have time and we have any questions, I'll open it for Walker and Naman to pass those to me. Yeah, Ryan, it's just too good to know on and myself. Always wanting to share the wealth. Hey, thanks, Ryan. That uh, that worked out uh, pretty good. I believe we may have uh, answered most of the questions. Um, 
<laughs> well, that just shows how good you guys are and how quick I am. <laughs> um, let's see. Come on, do you have anything? Um, not really. I'm uh, trying to figure out. Um, I think the screening question was answered uh, by Ryan already. Um, yeah, we can, yeah, we can cover that a little bit more too. Um, how screening works and and stuff. So in our plot style table with screening, we can set specific values. They're based on zero to one hundred percent. If you hover over screening, you get the option to tell you zero reduces the color to white. Selecting one hundred displays the color at its full intensity. It's more or less a percentage. Dithering has to be selected for screening. Um, this. Like I guess said, this is really helpful if you're trying to fade certain objects to the background. So to set it up, we're going to set magenta, or color 6, to about a 30% screening, dithers on, and we're going to set this to a color that we can see. So we'll leave it as object color, and we'll hit save and close, um, and then I think we just need to hit cancel. So in here, we're going to jump into our objects here. Let's go to properties. And so we can see we have all these center lines. So I think the best thing to do would be to, let's we'll see what they are. Let's see. So they're by center line layer. So what we'll do is we'll quick select our objects by layer of center line. So the, a quick select allows us to pick very specific items in our drawing. We probably should go over this in a webinar if we haven't. Um, use it if you can. So we'll include our, our center line. Anything that's in our drawing that equals the layer of center line, we included in a brand new selection set. So we'll hit OK. We see that all these objects are shown as center line. So now what we'll do is we'll jump over here and we'll put these on by layer. But I think we should put them to magenta. I already set magenta up. So back in paper space, we can see that these are set to magenta, but they're very faded. So that's the effect of screening. So if we wanted to set our plot style for the color magenta to be, say, we, it's too, too light, so let's go to 50. Um, but we want to make it so it's you know, for sure center lines. We can go in here and we can make sure that if center, if center lines loaded, we can have it. Um, so we want to overwrite it, let's do dashed. We'll hit save and close and cancel. So that darkens it just slightly. And you can see that we have now overridden it to be center lines. So screening works to really help fade drawings, or objects in drawings, rather. So if we preview this printing in our PDF, we can see it's now set to hidden. It's a light color versus a really dark color. Uh, it helps to also make objects stand out, say if this needed to be 100. And we'll use the object line type. And then we print. Those will print at full color and line type by object and line weight. So line weights are also important when talking about screening in that the line weight set lower will have a more drastic effect on screening than if it's set to full. So if we were to set a very light pen weight or line weight to 0.09 or 0.05 millimeters and use a screening of, say, 30%, that object will be very fine when printed. So you can see that it is barely there. So Remember when you do screening to also double check your line weights. Um, if you're not plotting with line weights and you're using line weights, remember to turn this on. If you decide not to plot with line weights and just let the CTB define them, that is also an option. Uh, you get very crisp lines that way and you have a lot less line weight problems. But if you're a company that uses specific line weights, remember that option needs to be enabled. So that's screening in a nutshell. Hopefully that helped a little bit, Naman. 
Yes, thank you so much. Uh, somebody had asked, can you add your own um, line weights? Uh, and uh, I guess, I mean, with all that options available, I don't know why one would want to, but, um, uh, you know, there's I, always a need. I'm not actually sure where you do that, but I think... Uh, yeah. You just go back into the plot style editor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know on the layers dialog box. I have no idea on that one. Yeah. Well, so I'm going to interrupt on that one you cannot you cannot add line weights you can modify the line weight okay but that's it there's like 20 line weights in there and um, certainly um, and you can't do that through the line weight box uh, you do need to use use the CTB to modify it um, yeah just how it's set up. Uh, I'm sure there's a registry tweak where you could probably modify them globally. Uh, I'm not going to encourage that at all. There are tools in AutoCAD to do that using a CTB. And if all you're wanting to do is see a custom line weight, then really what you can do is um, if you really if you don't use CTBs all the time, um, you're lacking that line weight, then create a CTB and just make one modification to the line weight and leave everything out else at the uh, by, um, uh, by object or all the other defaults, I should say. And so everything in AutoCAD is going to plot according to what the layers are, what, what the ob objects are, but the line weight will be overridden by your CTB. Hopefully that makes sense. Remember, because CTBs use color, that it's the line weights are associated by color. So even though an object line weight of 0.3 millimeters exists, our CTB says that, that this color red will print a very specific way. So red will actually print with the object line weight unless we enable that differently here. So that's also an important thing to remember when, when setting line weights or uh, screening is how your objects are set up. The importance of having it by layer is pretty easily seen when you have really thick line weights uh, or, or wrong colors and that helps to keep things consistent. And that's really what CTBs are about, is keeping things very consistent across the entire company or, or, or drafting office. Uh, in the past I've used them to uh, the, you know, as far as an extent as you can go, and it really helps to establish drafting and, and drawing consistency when printing. Um, in addition, printing to PDF can also help do that uh, in order to keep things, you know, visibly the same. So that's really plot style tables in a pretty quick nutshell, just to remind you guys where they're located in case uh, we briefed over that a little too quickly. Um, under your main user's username, app data roaming, Autodesk, the version, the release, English, you'll see under plotters, plot styles. So this is the location for 2017. It says the ones that we added today, one through the add a plot style table wizard and one through AutoCAD, which we did, which also uses the wizard just through AutoCAD. Uh, you can see the different CTBs that are loaded. Most of them are pretty old, um, but they've been around quite a while and they work pretty well. Uh, the defaults none or ACAD is another good one to start with. Um, these pretty much leave everything basic as far as if you go to the ACAD and look at it, everything is used object in 100%. So this is the default for a CTB, uh, easy to change. And just remember, you don't have to change all 255 colors. Just change the colors you use, um, and that'll help you to, to speed things along when you're creating a CTB. Hey, Ryan, can I throw in something uh, when you're using CTBs just uh, from the trenches here? Yeah, yeah please do. Yeah, uh, so the way I have kind of used it, like let's say if you use monochrome.ctv and you use uh, the uh, layers to d uh, drive the line weights, which is kind of 
better way of doing it in my opinion now uh, but also if you use any color other than the 255 or the RGB values don't match they plot color even with the monochrome.ctb so monochrome.ctb will print the 1 through 255 colors black and white uh, but any true color will print color right that is so a very good thing to that I use sometimes that uh, would help me you know have color and black and white together right yes I've done that in the past too and I I also find that very valuable um, and so in what Aman is saying is when you go into here and you change green to a color the AutoCAD color index is the 255 colors located in AutoCAD true color allows you to pick a very specific RGB value that may not match the 255 colors which allows you to print black and white and color so that that's actually a, a good point there and that is also where the STBs are a little more powerful because you are not limited to those 255 colors you can choose any of the million colors on the true color palette um, uh, using HSL or RGB factors uh, to assign the color so that's where STBs come in um, they're very um, uh, there's a little bit more to them uh, uh, than with the CTBs. And uh, speaking of STBs, I'm just going to take over for a moment because uh, there's a customer who had a question, um, which I really don't have a proper um, or concise answer for. And, and the question was, um, do we have a recommendation or best practice for importing geometry and blocks into our company drawing with named plot styles from a drawing done by another company with a color plot style? Currently, we have to pick a named plot style per each new imported layer in the Layer Properties Manager. And yeah, that can be um, a problem. If I guess my best recommendation would be if you have all those blocks in a library drawing, even if it's a CTB, then create a template file based upon your STB standards. Insert the library drawing into that STB template with the explode option turned on. That way it'll explode the drawing itself, but leave the blocks intact in the STB file. It'll, you'll still have to do some tweaking to uh, layers or, or such, but it's a quick way for the blocks to inherit properties um, uh, of your standards. And uh, chances are, as, as long as the layer names are the same, or you have a STB uh, style assigned to a layer, then those blocks are going to inherit that style. So that, that, that's the way I would start out, just by inserting my CTB drawing into an STB drawing. And I hope that helps. You could also convert the file back and forth, CTB to STB to see what it prints as. And the other thing too is in, in a block where the objects are set to by layer, and the block is inserted, say, to layer zero, but the objects are colored, that block will likely reset when exploded. You can also use the burst command to keep objects the proper color, just to make sure if that's been overridden and see where that lies. Uh, that's a good answer, Volker. Thank you. Um, and I think the other thing about STBs, I did create an STB drawing real quick to, s to show you. Um, we can at least just glance, you can see my Beyond the Basics version 2 STB. We'll jump in it just for a brief second as we're nearing the end of our time. And you can see I only have two plot styles uh, for my, my STB. The plot menu looks very similar, but as the Mon pointed out, I can select very specific properties, uh, or Volker, I can't remember who it was, but about STBs I can pick a true true color or color book or index color if I want to versus a CTB which only picks index colors. Um, 
and that's important to remember. And we can also see if we go into here, um, you know, we have our by layer settings and everything's the same with an STB drawing. So you really won't see that big of a difference there. So I think that about wraps it up unless we have any more questions. So even if we do have uh, more questions, I'd like to run my final poll and um, just kind of get some feedback uh, before everybody decides to run out to lunch or, or just run out on us. So um, so um, just lost my train of thought here. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> all righty, let's go ahead and first of all, let's do this. And let's get rid of this guy. And let us run that poll. All right, so our main question here is, um, did you learn something new in today's session? Yes, because we do want to make sure that these sessions are worth your time. We know your time's valuable. You have to get the job done. So uh, we always appreciate uh, the fact that We've sat through our webinars, and we tried to do our best to make it worthwhile. And it looks like about 96% of you are saying yes, um, which uh, 95. Well, it may even go lower, but um, either way, that's that's a good number. It makes us makes us feel um, that the work we put into these is worth worth our while as well. So let me close that poll. I'm just going to share it real quick, and um, And I think that is about it. Don't for, you will be getting a excuse me. Sorry about that. I'm gonna just um, finish sharing that real quick. What I was gonna say is that uh, you will be receiving an email with a follow up uh, to all the links once everything has been posted on our website uh, for you to download. In the meantime, the slide deck um, does have some additional resources in it regarding plot style tables, uh, the plot style table wizard, and uh, among other items. So we encourage you to check out those links as well as the uh, other resources which are available on the AKN or Autodesk Knowledge Network. I do believe that that is about it. You can uh, email us. If you have concerns or kudos or um, feature requests uh, for our webinars, uh, that link is on the screen. It'll be in that PowerPoint deck. Uh, be sure to put build your AutoCAD IQ in that subject line. We have numerous um, webinars by numerous teams. And um, sometimes it's hard to tell which webinar somebody's referring to when they're asking uh, this or that. So um, yeah, it, it helps a lot putting that subtle message in our header in the subject line of that email. Any other questions? Oh, Wokor, uh, very quickly. Uh, somebody asked how do you uh, convert an extra or have an extra print all screen, uh, gray screen or uh, screened out. Uh, change all the layers basically to uh, your screen color and then I learned a new um, variables called xref override and set it to one. What it does is it makes all object overrides basically to set to by layer so then in your post drawing you can control whatever color you want it to be. And that's a good variable to point out Naman. Um, that variable is rather new. We actually did a new features uh, for AutoCAD where we discussed that particular variable. But if you haven't used it, if you aren't aware of it, then you aren't going to know about it. So uh, Naman made a good point. It's a great, great function to, have, uh, to be using. It's XREF override. So. 
Well, I think we will call it quits just because um, we're going to quit. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you guys next week. We really do and appreciate, again, uh, you guys being here. Oh, have a very safe holiday, okay? Be safe. We want to see you back. Cheers, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Wilbur.